Hey guys, so today we're going to discuss the nomenclature of organic and molecular compounds. So we're going to start with a quick discussion of the naming system for molecular compounds and then we're going to discuss alkanes, which is a very basic group of organics and really the only one that you really need to know off the top of your heads. So let's go ahead and get started right off the bat with some nomenclature of molecular compounds. The first thing that's critical for you guys to recognize when we're naming molecular formulas is how to identify if it's a molecular formula in the first place. Now we know it's a molecular formula if we look at the compound itself and we see only nonmetals. If all of the elements in the formula are nonmetals, we know that it is going to be a molecular compound. So for the molecular compounds that we're going to be discussing today, we're going to focus on binary molecular compounds. Now binary means that the compound is made of only two elements. This makes the naming a little bit easier and we don't have to really worry too much about the nomenclature of more complex organic compounds. Um, one day you'll get there, but that's not today. Now going into this, it's important to know that every compound has a systematic name but some also have common names. For example, water, H2O, has its own systematic name that we'll discuss here in a few minutes, but we just call it water. Ammonia, which is NH3, also has a systematic name, but we call it ammonia. These are many compounds that come into play in daily existence, and as a result, we oftentimes refer to them by their common names as opposed to by their actual systematic names. So let's talk about the systematic naming of molecular compounds. We utilize a Greek prefix system where the prefix represents the number of atoms of that element in the compound. For example, mono represents one, di represents two, tri represents three, and you want to know all the way down through ten. For the Greek naming system, we also, for binary compounds, are going to end every compound in ide, I-D-E. This means the second element in the binary compound, we're going to drop the ending and finish it with ide, I-D-E. It's also important to note for the Greek naming system that if the first element in the compound only has one atom, for instance, in CO2, we don't call it monocarbon dioxide. We simply drop the mono and call it carbon dioxide. This represents that carbon only has one atom but we don't have to do the mono in front of it. That ends up redundant. So for the Greek naming system, if you don't see a mono in front of the first word, or you don't see any Greek prefix in front of the first word, it tells you that there's only one atom of that element. For example, di-nitrogen tetrahydride. Now, the di-nitrogen represents two atoms of nitrogen. The tetrahydride represents four atoms of hydrogen. So what we're going to do here is we're simply going to write the formula N2, subscript 2. Remember, the subscripts represent the number of atoms of an element in a compound, H4. This means we have two atoms of nitrogen and four atoms of hydrogen in every one molecule of this compound. We can also go from a formula to a name. Now, we have here H2. 2s. Based on our Greek naming system, we see that we have two hydrogens, which means that we're going to say dihydrogen. We have one sulfur, and remember for the second element we need to drop the ending and finish it in ide, so it becomes sulfide. But because there's one, it's monosulfide, and so therefore the name of this molecular compound is dihydrogen monosulfide. All right, now I want you guys to practice here. So look at these four different examples. We're going to go from formula to name here. Take a look at these four examples. Solve them. Pause the video if you need a few seconds. When you come back or get stuck, we're going to go ahead and solve them together. All right, so I've had a few seconds to work on this. Let's go through the answers. The first molecular compound that we're looking at is NF3. Now NF3, the first element is nitrogen, but there's only one of it, so we actually don't need that first prefix, so we're just going to say nitrogen. There are three fluorines, 
which means we need to start the flooring with tri, and we're going to drop the ending and end in an ide. So this becomes nitrogen trifluoride. The second compound here is N2O4. Here we do need a prefix on the first element, nitrogen, so it becomes dinitrogen, and there are four oxygens, so it becomes tetraoxide. So dinitrogen tetraoxide. The third compound here is NO2. Again, we don't need a, a uh, prefix in front of the nitrogen. There's two oxygens, so it becomes nitrogen dioxide. And the final one, SF6. Again, we do not need a initial uh, prefix for the sulfur, so it simply becomes sulfur. There are six fluorines, so it's sulfur hexafluoride. All right. Now that we've gone from formula to name, let's go name to formula. I'm going to give you four more examples that, again, you're going to do on your own. So here are the four examples. Pause the video. Take a few seconds. Go through them. When you get stuck or get the answer, go ahead and unpause the video, and we'll go through these together. All right. So now I've had a few seconds to work on it. Let's go through the answers. The first name that we're given is disulfur decafluoride. Disulfur means that there are two sulfur atoms, so we're going to put S subscript 2. And decafluoride represents 10 fluorine atoms, which means it's S2F10. The second compound is phosphorus trihydride. Phosphorus does not have a prefix, which means there's only one of it, so we're just going to put P with no subscript followed by trihydride. That means three hydrogen atoms. Three hydrogen atoms, which means we're going to put P, followed by H, subscript 3, pH 3. The third example here is silicon tetraiodide. Silicon, again, no prefix, which means there's just one of it, so we're just going to put S by itself, SI by itself, followed by triiodide. That means there's three iodine atoms, which means we are dealing with SI, capital I for iodide, 3. All right, be careful with the capital letters and lowercase letters, because if you put two lowercase i's, you're in trouble. So it's SI, capital I, 3. The final example, xenon hexafluoride. Xenon does not have a prefix, therefore it's just XE. Hexafluoride means that you have six fluorine atoms, so it's XEF6. All right. So the last thing we need to talk about is going to be the nomenclature for very basic organic compounds known as alkanes. Now, alkanes are compounds made completely of carbon and hydrogen and are going to be named largely based off of the number of carbons in the compound. The first four do not necessarily follow the Greek naming system, but after four, they do. So for instance, CH4 contains one carbon. We call that methane. C2H6 is ethane, C3H8 is propane, and C4H10 is butane. Beyond that, you can see pentane, then hexane, all the way through decane, and these are then based off of the Greek prefixes, just like the compounds we talked about earlier. You need to know those first four, though. And here's what's going to happen. You can go from name to formula or formula to name. So now let's go from name back to formula for these alkanes. So going from name to formula of alkanes can be based off of this generalized formula. C sub n, in other words, the number of carbons, and then H sub 2n plus 2. In other words, the number of hydrogens is equal to double the number of carbons plus 2. For example, methane, CH4, the number of, car the number of carbons is 1. Therefore, the number of hydrogens is 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 2, which is 4. As we keep going, we can find pentane and hexane and see that each of these, the formula is going to be based off of, again, the number of carbons times 2 plus 2 to get to the number of hydrogens. All right, so that wraps up this video. Let's do a quick recap as to what we learned. Now, we started by learning about how to go from formula to name, and then named a formula for molecular compounds using our Greek prefix naming system. Then 
we talked about the basic alkanes and how to go from name to formula and formula to name for those as well. I'd like to thank Kevin Zhang for his work on this video. He wrote the script, filmed it, edited it, and I would like to thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video.